there are increasing indications that Planet X, also known as Nibiru, is moving in a precise direction towards planet Earth. So what does this suggest for those of us who dwell on this planet? Is there actually a biblical link that correlates with the end times as we know it? Many of you believe that NASA and other government bodies, such as the Pentagon and the CIA, are aware of its approach. Your belief carries considerable weight, considering the recent publication of scientific studies claiming that there is proof of an unnamed mysterious planet lurking beyond Pluto. The claim was determined by observations of gravitational influences on a group of celestial bodies called the extreme trans-Neptunian objects, which are orbiting our sun beyond Neptune. The approach of the mysterious planet Nibiru is at present sending waves of charged plasmatic energy particles through our solar system. The flow of energy will finally affect the core flows of the Earth and result in catastrophic changes in Earth's climate, which is without a doubt occurring on an escalated scale. Planet Earth has been feeling the effects of this inbound planet or system of planets since 1996, with records showing a troublesome increase in seismic and volcanic activity, extreme weather patterns, and catastrophic disasters. U.S. and Russian governments are aware of its approach, as is the Vatican hierarchy, which is keeping a watchful eye on the heavens with their sophisticated telescope perched high in the mountains of Arizona. In the meantime, the public is being kept in the dark regarding this approaching apocalypse. The consensus by many is that such an event would annihilate two-thirds of the world's population, while two-thirds of those who survive the initial impact will perish over time due to starvation and exposure to the elements. The question that persists with respect to Planet X is whether this mysterious planet that scientists now claim exists beyond Pluto is the same planet that is believed to have wiped out much of humanity thousands of years ago. There is, however, more to the story than what meets the eye. Based on the research study known as Extreme Trans-Neptunian Objects, and the Kazai mechanism, signaling the uh, presence of trans-Plutonian planets, posted in 2014 in the journal Monthly Notices of the Royal Astronomical Society Letters, there are at least two planets, part of our solar system, larger than Earth, lurking out there beyond Pluto, and whose existence can be noticed through their gravitational influences. So it is fair to say that NASA understands that these planetary objects are a serious threat to our civilization. It is widely perceived that researchers had proposed that the so-called Planet X was at least 10 times as large as Earth and was most likely situated at a distance of 250 astronomical units from our Sun with an orbit of 10 to 20,000 years. There is an understanding that an approaching large body or a star system of planets and moons can trigger considerable differences in magnetic activity and recent data from our magnetosphere indicates that this is what is now taking place. There were even suggestions that Google Sky had revealed an area in space that had been censored by NASA, showing the wing globe moving through our solar system. So are these subtle warnings an earnest attempt to inform us that an apocalyptic situation is at hand, which is coming from out of this world? something previously unknown to humanity, 
but which have memories in our subconscious from past lives and records kept over the ages? If we consider the ancient era of Atlantis and Lemuria and what happened to these civilizations, is it any wonder that NASA would redact the location of this incoming body on Google Sky or in their own imagery? Every week, NASA appears to have learned something new that was unimaginable. And yet, they want us to imagine that Planet X Nibiru is unreal. As you can envision, the gravitational consequences of a sizable planet moving close to the inner solar system would spell huge problems for planet Earth. Not only are we witnessing climate extremes and a shifting of the Earth, but we are now bearing witness to the very real observations that the four seasons as we have known them are now blending. So with all of this in mind, we can now ascertain why certain governments are taking steps to protect their own interests as they prepare for the arrival and the aftermath of this large planetary body or system of planets moving through our solar system. Here is some news that has been widely reported, but which some of you may not be aware of. Russia recently completed building or updating some 5,000 shelters in Moscow. They actually have been quite open about what they are doing, but they haven't specifically stated the actual reason for constructing or updating these shelters. But we do know that they have some facilities that can accommodate up to 100,000 people. The United States is estimated to have over 150 deep underground military bases. Coincidentally, a huge military underground city exists below the Denver airport. Now, these are entire underground cities that have been under construction since the 1980s. But this is a need-to-know classification that is underway and is never published in advance for fear of destabilizing the economy. If you do any research of this topic, you are bound to run into various forms of disinformation. Now, some of it intentional, but much of it produced by uneducated individuals within the public. Until the discovery of Planet X, Astronomers had regarded the writings of the ancient Sumerians about this object as legend. When Planet X was discovered in 1983, they suddenly learned that the Sumerians were not the primitive people they had been made out to be by intellectuals of today. Have you ever wondered what the real purpose of the Hubble Space Telescope was intended for? It was not to explore the universe and the solar system, as some have suggested. Rather, the reason for constructing this multi-billion dollar telescope and then placing it in orbit was for the purpose of observing the inbound Planet X. A June 6th interview with a Hubble insider states this fact as to the Hubble's purpose. He watched this mysterious body through the Hubble telescope and stated that this thing looked as if it was nearby and the Hubble got cut off and they encrypted it and that was the end of any transmission. So let's listen to this interview. Back in the 1950s, most people aren't aware of it, but there was a scientific storm in America all through the late 50s about this thing out there in space because the astronomers were all watching it, and that was back when they weren't afraid to talk about it. It was in the science magazines. I mean, I had a subscription to, like, Popular Science and Health. It was on the front cover of the magazine one day in, like, 1961. And uh, I was really excited when I saw it because here's this giant red planet on the horizon uh, of the California coast and a humongous tidal wave coming in towards the coast and having grew up in the mountains of uh, the Sierras and this thing in the magazine it said this tidal wave coming in was going to be at least three miles high and I went and showed it to everybody in the house and they laughed and they said look 
It says right here, there's nothing to worry about. It won't be here for another 50 years. Hey, guess what? That 50 years has came and gone. And uh, this baby's out there in the sky. They've been watching it. I watched it. And I can tell you, this thing has got so much trash coming around it. You know how we live in a solar system? We've got nine planets and a big sun. This right. thing has got seven planets and its own sun. The years as it went by and we watched it, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then finally, about 08, we could see this thing like it was across the street. And we could see that it was a blazing hot ball of fire, giving out sparkles of red iron oxide dust for thousands of miles in every direction. And you could see the planets circulating it. Now, I'll tell you one thing that I really am nervous about. I think this thing's got a planet like ours circling it. This is its own solar system. We're about to have a solar system come through the middle of our solar system. This can't be good. But unfortunately, it looks as though that's what's going to happen. We were looking at asteroids right close to this thing. There's asteroids that are floating around right near the, uh, that are orbiting the, uh, the main sun itself. These things appear to be about 500 miles across. This thing looks like a giant red teardrop shaped dust cloud and you can see once if you if you're able to see it up close like we did you can see every speck out there now these cia people that i know say that we're not going to uh, uh be that close to it when it goes past us they're saying that in order to attain breakaway speed when it comes up around the back side of the sun its speed will at least double possibly more which will put it here earlier than everybody is saying it will, and uh, that this thing will probably be about 20, mi 20 million miles from us when, when it crosses in front of us. And then as soon as it flips us upside down, we're going to go into its debris field. These CIA guys told me that this pole shift will probably happen from start to finish in around 28 minutes. That doesn't give you a lot of warning. When you see that thing out there in the sky, you're going to have to run as fast as you can to your underground facility because this is going to happen so fast. Now, see, here's another thing nobody's talking about. You've got this giant iron planet that they say is 47,000 miles across, getting ready to come up past us. And when well, it starts is, to approach us, is, it's going to start and have real serious effects. So is it a and planet then, or a failed star? It's not a failed star. It, it, you know, I saw this thing up close. It did not look like a failed star. It looked just like our sun. Right. Okay. It, the, would you call our sun a failed star? No. Okay. Well, you had said planet. I wasn't sure if it was like a, a failed star brown dwarf or a full sun. So it's a full sun? It's a, it, it looks to me like a miniature sun, just like the one we have. The only difference is, see, is our sun is uh, giving off flames and stuff. And this one's doing the same thing as it, but it's giving off this red iron oxide cloud of dust around it. And until it got close, we couldn't even tell what was in there. We knew we could see it was hot, and it looked like it was just a dull red when we were first able to discern it through the red cloud. But as it approached, it started to become more apparent that this thing is just orange hot. Right. And um, it's got this enormous, and I mean enormous, the, at least 50 or 100,000 miles on each side of it, this red dust cloud that goes all the way around it. I know when we were watching it, as it started to make the upward swing to approach behind our sun, it was amazing. The red dust cloud settled down instead of being around it started to settle down into a V like wings, upside down wings. Right. And I thought, boy, I wonder if that's where the ancient Sumerians got the idea of this thing had wings. Because, you know, centrifugal force is a funny thing. When it yeah. comes back up around the planet, when we see it in the sky, my guess is it's going to look like it's got wings because centrifugal force is going to be pulling the uh, red iron oxide dust and particles uh, uh, out to one side. This thing's going to look like a big red dragon, exactly like all the ancient Sumerians and the Chinese and all the rest of them that had documented this thing's passing before. Uh, it didn't look like a white ball or a snow cloud or nothing. It looked like a big red iron oxide dust cloud with a superheated star in the middle of it. And I mean, you know, and that's what we've seen. Uh, so, you know, I don't care what anybody else says. There's a possibility. There's more than one thing out there. You know, I watched it through the Hubble Space Telescope, 
And when this thing looked like it was uh, across the street, uh, the Hubble got cut off and they encrypted it, and that was the end of any transmissions we had to watch. And, uh, and we know that the Hubble, in order to be in the shadow of the Earth, had to be at an angle, and so that meant it was looking downward. Right. Uh, and this thing was coming up underneath of us, and uh, uh, I tell you the honest God truth, I personally think this thing is real close to us right now, but, you know, that's just my general feeling that, uh, you know, and I'm a pretty psychic guy, uh, I have the feeling that this thing is right close by and that we're going to see it any time, okay? Because, listen, they've known about this thing forever, and I mean they've known about it forever. I mean, if, if I read about it in a science magazine in 1961, that tells you that, I mean, it's only 1,800 years away. How could they not be able to see it when it came around the backside of the last sun and headed this way? Right, right. You have to know they've been watching it because if you, you know, Carl Sagan was showing stuff that they took with their old telescopes that was billions and billions of, of miles away, and this thing's only 1,800 years away, well... And by 1930, it was only 70 years away. You know, we do estimate that this thing, let me give you a thing, maybe you can figure out your own timeline. We estimated that this thing is traveling around 3,500 miles an hour, okay? Okay. That was our estimate of its speed. Now, it has been picking up speed, and that's the reason why we think it's going to arrive early, because when it comes around the backside of the sun, it's got to double that speed in order to attain breakaway speed to leave the sun and not wind up orbiting it. It's never orbited the sun in the past that we know of, so that means that it's going to have to attain breakaway speed to head back out into space. Now, you look at the NASA videos, photos, and all this other crap those morons put on the Internet. This thing is coming in. It's going to, as soon as it goes around the top of the sun, it's going to go pew back out into space right and it's going to do this really fast when it goes past us it's going to go past us so fast that we'll almost have no time to get ready that's my opinion but you know just drawing it out on paper a few times and thinking about it and i went you know if this thing picks up enough speed to make breakaway speed then that means it's going to come past us you know this thing according to uh, what i was told is that this thing is approximately 47,000 miles in diameter, uh, you know, four or five times the size of the Earth, and it'll come past us, and we won't have a lot of warning, and we won't get to see it in the sky until it's on us. Now, I was told that the poles are not shifting at 42 miles a year. They're shifting at 42 miles a day, and the reason is is because this planet is rolling over to face this thing. Now, when it goes by, it's not going to push our North Pole away. It's going to grab our Southern Pole with its Northern Pole, and it's going to be like somebody kicked this planet in the ass. That earthquake that it talks about in uh, Revelations, uh, when the opening of the sixth seal comes, from what I've been told, that's very accurate because that's exactly what's going to happen. There's going to be a massive earthquake when it locks onto us. As it goes past us, we're going to follow it right upside down. The oceans are just going to be roaring from pole to pole, as you could well guess they would, because if you take a planet that's 7,000 miles across and roll it upside down in 30 minutes, you're going to have some real serious problems with wind and water. We should be preparing to expect this thing to show up any time. So this particular insider is stating in the most revealing terms that something ominous is heading our way that NASA has known about for decades. Nibiru, a.k.a. Planet X, and referred to by the Vatican as Wormwood, has a mass that is three to five times the mass of Jupiter. Its composition is cesium, iron oxide, iron, oxygen, and ozone. And according to the interview by the Hubble Insider, it consists of seven planets and moons that orbit it and innumerable asteroids. Its existence is known by all of the major governments of the world, and they are prepared, as I described earlier in this presentation. The object is very big, and until recently, it is a red dwarf star visible only in the infrared spectrum. The agent claims that the government is monitoring the system 
and that in 2008 it could be seen in high detail with infrared telescopes. But the manner of observation is beginning to change. Using deductive logic, a number of independent videos are capturing its close approach now. Well, we don't get up to late because we're retired. At nine o'clock, I heard a knock on the door. It was a chap from next door. He was out watering his tomato plants and he said, Do you want the good news or the bad news? I said, the good news is you got a swimming pool? Yeah, and he came out and got a hole in the ground, you know. Oh, my goodness. It's hard to explain. Yeah. A hole in the backyard. <laughs> And as we've, been out, as we've been out here watching it all morning with our neighbours, it's got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think, when's it going to stop? Um, what it is is old workings, old mine workings. We've identified the fact that there's a shaft put in here many, many years ago and um, we've been in contact with the mines department. They're sending a team up here. Uh, Summer and there can't actually be snow somewhere in the United States, can there? Yes, there can. Mauna Kea Observatory, that's over in Hawaii, of course, and as if it's not crazy enough that we have snow somewhere in the United States, how about the fact that... Becky, because the weather woes never seem to end in this country for weeks, even months. People in this country have been really just praying for one thing, and that is for the monsoons to arrive, because after two years of drought, their farmland has been desecrated. There's been this heat wave that's been sweeping across the country, killing hundreds of people. And now it's the monsoons that are killing people. As you mentioned, 90 people killed just in a matter of 24 hours, mainly in this one state of Bihar. Most of the people who died were farmers, because this is a time uh, as the monsoons arrive when farmers are out planting uh again. don't think you'll be disappointed with this not a spot on lens not a spider there's no legs with this and they're on four cameras at the same time 
and now we can see that it stayed in there for one hour and then it bounces back again it is in a orbit around nibiru that it looks appear to be coming and going so it's going above and below the horizon as this thing is coming at us and away from us as it approaches us and then retreats as it goes around nemesis next i'm going to show you please pay attention to the time here this is the second at the same time now this is over italy and now we've got switzerland at the same time we've got the same object and let me do the time lapse on this one yes look how big it's getting you can start to make out the plasma tail and the camera setting here looks like a 400 iso not quite visible with the naked eye look at that that thing's just getting bigger and you can almost make out the redness of this thing. Oh my gosh. I've never seen this thing so big. It's getting close. Wow. We continue running the time lapse here. And then it disappears. And it reappears again. Again, it's the shadow. It's still facing the northwest. The actual planet is in the north, southeast. What you see here, everybody, is a thing called sun calc. And what it does, what this program does, is it shows you where the sunrise and the sunset should be relative to your position. So an example here, this is where I am right now, where this red dot is. This is where I'm located. And basically it's saying that the sunset should happen at this, or the sunrise should happen on the yellow line, and the sunset, sunset should happen on this red line. Okay? Now, here is the important thing that I want to bring up right away this morning. The North Star first of all, was off by three to five degrees as confirmed by about 30 subscribers over the weekend. So anybody that knows where the North Star should be based on fixed points uh, on the ground, like me, um, my story was I, I, I go out and I've been checking the North Star's position for three years. It has not changed for three years, okay? It stays in the same place winter, spring, summer, and fall. It's always in the same place, okay? The way you can find the North Star is you take the two ends of the Big Dipper and draw a line. So our position, fixed position relative to the North Star right now is off by three to five degrees to the west, Wayne. Or to the east. To the east. Yes, in my observation, and I have a solid one, and then I've gotten confirmation from several different people. So what does this mean? Why is Steve so freaked out about the North Star? The reason Steve is freaked out about the North Star is it's the one fixed point that we all can, everybody in the Earth, can validate the North Star being in a position if they have two fixed points on the Earth. Okay? I have now enough information to tell you from astrophysicists, astronomers, and people that have given us feedback at WSO, they all tell me that we're correct, Wayne that the North Star has moved three to five degrees to the east. The implications of this, Steve, is, um, well, it's very disturbing. Yes. The second point I wanted to bring up, and that's what the sun kelp thing is for, is to say that you see that red, that red line, Wayne, that points off at about rough, this is, this is a rough 45 or just off 45 degree angle here. See that? I see it, Steve from sunrise to sunset. So it is normal for us to see the sun setting in the northwest, and it is, it's normal for us to see it rising in the northeast. First of all, that's not unusual for this time of year, you guys, okay? What is unusual, though, and I, if you can, can you see my little hand? Yes. When I looked at the sunset for the last two nights, the sunset has been here, where my hand is. Hmm. About 22 degrees, Wayne. <laughs> Which... By the way, Steve, as you know, when you called me on Saturday and I immediately went in and checked uh, my compasses, um, I registered and recorded the same anomaly. And here in the Denver area, we were off by about 
oh, 22 to 27 degrees to the northwest. And it didn't change. In fact, uh, Steve, I posted on my YouTube channel um, a recording of where I actually filmed the needle of the compass actually oscillating back and forth. And, and that was Saturday. Yeah, and by the way, and I won't, I won't bore everybody with the, with the data, you know, because it is pretty boring data, but that has been confirmed by several as well that did, after we talked on Saturday, I reached out to a couple of the other subscribers and they all confirmed that they were also having the same magnetic anomaly. I actually know a pilot friend who told us yesterday that he's a private pilot, that he can no longer rely on his compass. Um, I said, well, how do you get from point A to point B? He says that they, they use um, a gyro uh, software that is more directly linked to GPS as opposed to trying to follow magnetic north. Yeah, let me, having been an ex-avionics guy, I can give you a little insight into that. There are, th there's a ca thing called a gyroscopic internal navigation system that, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So those, those, those systems don't even require GPS, by the way, um, Wayne. Well, thank you. See, I'm a novice. I, you know, I, I ride in them. I don't drive them. Right. No, no, that's okay. I, I, it's a very strange thing that I'm an expert in it because the Air Force made me one. <laughs> Good. So we used to navigate with a primary, our primary navigation before GPS came online was a thing called PACAN. The, the civilian world has a similar thing, and basically those are fixed points on the Earth that transmit signals that basically are waypoints, okay, across the country. So you can know, navigate um, as a commercial military, or as a military pilot, you can navigate by TACAN, you can navigate by com uh, compass, you can navigate with uh, yes, and then internal navigate, and then the last thing is in called internal navigation system, which is a GP is a gyroscopic uh, device that uses the Earth itself as its waypoint, Excellent. but doesn't rely on celestial um, observations or anything like that. It just knows where you are relative to fixed. Hi, so this is Solar System Scope. And we can see this is the actual time and planet where we're at right now with our universe. I'd like to show you a couple things where we're at and where these ob objects actually are. As I said before, that so if you click on this little Earth, click on here, and then we can see the different views. And most of these were over Italy and Germany. And we can see when we click on the scope here. I said that when we were looking at the shadows. To the northwest that would have been right about here and at this time so everything i'm doing is all happened within 30 minutes it is 6 40 pacific time so i'll leave a link in the description because it's happening now and so the southeast is where this whole thing's going as it settles down i think just about in here somewhere it's probably again this is our horizon this is our earth's ecliptic plane through the plasma field which is going to stop the earth pole shift the rich people are going to hide in their cities which a lot of christians believe that this is going to be a six seal judgment and i'm one of them and how can i stay calm because the world is not falling apart everything is falling into place just the way god told you it was so i wanted to show you one other planetary alignment that i think is uh, important and you know i'm just looking at the elections predictive programming neptune the signs uh i look at bible prophecies where i get these alignments and one alignment that i find very interesting is the sun moon earth neptune in the Aquarius on August 31st I've heard this date before this alignment with Neptune because it's a water planet like in the days of Noah I think they had an an ancient flood when two when the water planet is in alignment with Aquarius this is like a time clock 
people were confirmed dead and 13 others remain missing after heavy rain caused flash floods and landslides in East China's Jiangxi province, South China's Hunan, Guizhou, Guangdong provinces, and Guangxi Autonomous Region. According to the local government, as of 6 p.m. on Wednesday, floods had left three people dead in Jiangxi. So far, 21,000 people in the province have been relocated, and another 10,000 people are in dire need of assistance. In Hunan, continuous rain resulted in swollen rivers, landslides, and mud rock flows. The provincial flood control and drought relief headquarters said on Wednesday that three people died in Hengshan County. Meanwhile, four others were reported missing. About 530 houses collapsed, and nearly 12,000 people were evacuated. In Guangxi, one person was killed when a house collapsed in torrential rain. Two were swept away by floods, while another was buried by a landslide. The rain and ensuing disasters also destroyed over 700 houses, ruined more than 20,000 hectares of crops, and four. We begin in Ethiopia, where the death toll from a landslide at a rubbish dump in the capital has risen to more than 60, and there are fears it may still go up. Rescue officials are still searching for dozens of bodies trapped under the kosher landfill. CGTN's Girum Chala has this update from Addis Ababa. Dozens of makeshift homes are buried under the mountain of garbage behind me. People have been dumping their rubbish here for decades. It's believed around 150 people were here when the landslide took place on Saturday night. Dozens of people are buried under tons of waste, as you can see behind me uh, there. People have been making a living by picking through the rubbish dump for useful items. Some had even made permanent homes for themselves around here. It's believed children are among the dead. Search and rescue operations continue here, but rescue workers face a tough task. Bulldozers have to carefully remove the rubbish uh, over there. The heavy machinery could cause further slides as well. For now, they operate in the hope of finding survivors. NATO is touching down in southwest Florida. This happened overnight. And this was the scene in Punta Gorda where an EF-1 tornado touched down on Aspen Road East. The storm going through one family's yard, destroying their barn, sending chunks of metal flying, even cutting their horses loose. A lot of memories of this barn had ever since I was 13. Now it's gone. Went out with him, we, and the other horses were loose, running around, and it's very dark. Well, the storm also flipping the family's truck over on its head. All the family's animals are expected to be okay, though one duck was lost. The family says they're working to clean up the mess and rebuild. China's National Observatory has raised its orange alert for frozen roads in the country's western Tibet autonomous region. The snowstorm and frigid temperatures have led to road and highway closures. A blizzard swept the Shikaze, Ali and Shanan areas on Friday and Saturday. Snow drifts were 30 to 50 centimeters deep in the urban areas of several counties in Shikaze. Well, the power supply in downtown Jilong was also temporarily cut down. 
Local authorities are clearing the roads, so they also distributed food and livestock feed in advance to help villagers graze for the snowstorm. Maurice Christine, good evening. It is low tide here, but high water on the Great South Bay, where streets flooded and folks were forced to stay inside. Cars caught in salt water, a big problem. The rainy, wintry mix melted, and even several hours after noon's high tide here on Suffolk's South Shore, streets in low lying areas were impassable. All eyes are on that massive storm. Take a live look at Wrigley Field in Chicago. The snow starting to come down right now. The roads messy there this morning. They're bracing for up to half a foot of snow today. Highway havoc in the Midwest, a late winter storm slamming millions from Iowa to Minnesota. Awful. I didn't expect it to get this bad. It's intense. So crazy. Plummeting temperatures, freezing freeways, sending cars sliding off the road and into each other. The treacherous conditions causing this 24 car pileup outside of Minneapolis. Wind and waves from Lake Ontario along with freezing temperatures engulf this New York house in ice. Surprisingly, this isn't out of the ordinary. Delays in the Twin Cities as airlines have scrambled to de-ice planes is stuck on the tarmac. A frigid blast blowing across the region overnight, dumping close to 10 inches of snow from the Dakotas to Iowa. Another 24 inches expected in some areas by Wednesday. But merciless sub-freezing temperatures, disastrous near Detroit. 65,000 people in the area still without power. And officials now say carbon monoxide poisoning from generators have left two people dead. In this northern Detroit home, a mother and her two young children hospitalized. This morning, across the Northeast, 60 million residents are bracing for the winter wallop as it barrels. Now to Peru and those tragic mudslides, the death toll rising there following intense rains that have left thousands homeless, but some heroic rescues giving many hope. Here's ABC's Marcy Gonzalez. In the fast moving muddy water and piles of dangerous debris, a woman almost washed away. As she tries to free herself, her hair seemingly gets stuck before she finally pulls herself to safety. One of many lives narrowly spared from Peru's raging flooding and mudslides that officials say have killed more than 70 people so far this year and left more than 70,000 people homeless. Tonight, as intense downpours overwhelm towns and send rivers pouring over their banks, desperate rescues are underway. Near the normally dry capital city of Lima, dozens of people crowd onto rooftops above washed out streets. Zip lines being used to bring families and pets over fast rising water. Others are forming human chains to get to dry ground. Tonight, half of the country is declared a state of emergency. Officials say this is the worst flooding in Peru in nearly two decades, with much more rain still expected. started taking everything up. My trash cans were flying everywhere. My tent was flying everywhere. I was kind of hanging on it like almost like a monkey in a sense trying to hold everything down. There is one video taken by Louisiana resident Danny Garceau on April the 1st. The video has garnered a great deal of attention. 
I would say that this is one of the most convincing captures of the star system that I have analyzed over the years. The brown dwarf in a very rare appearance as it orbits our sun in retrograde fashion. And there was also a series of images taken on March 16th and 17th, which are equally incredible, showing the presence of a celestial body. These images are posted on our Facebook page and can be viewed close up. And be sure to follow our page for daily updates on the Planet X Nibiru system leave a comment or a message, and as a source to share your images and videos. April 4th, Tuesday, 9 o'clock Mountain Time, 2017. What we're looking at is the Gulf of Mexico Rainbow Loop is what they call this. And you can still see a persistent disturbance down here in the Florida Panhandle. It's slowly moved across Louisiana, southern Mississippi, Alabama, and it's been hitting Florida and Georgia the past couple of days. And it was so intense in Georgia yesterday that they've gone ahead and declared ahead of tomorrow's storms because it's predicted to cause a lot of damage and destruction in southwestern Georgia tomorrow that they've declared a state of emergency right here in uh, Albany or actually south of Albany in Doherty County. A full-blown state of emergency in Doherty County ahead of the severe weather and it hasn't even happened yet. And it's because the weather that they got yesterday was so bad, so strong, so intense, that they're not taking any chances. Here's what the uh, local news had to say about it right here. And you can see the maps of what they're predicting for tomorrow. They are in a uh, moderate to high tornado uh, path right through here. And Albany's right in the middle of it. Check it out. Here's what they've got to say. State of emergency has been declared for Doherty County ahead of tomorrow's storm. The National Weather Service shows Doherty County could possibly see strong, long track tornadoes with destructive wind gusts as high as 70 miles per hour. Now, these weather events could happen throughout the day tomorrow. And we want to tell you more on the details on what exactly a disaster declaration means. Number one, the county emergency operations plans will be activated. Number two, the emergency operations ordinances that Doherty County commissioners adopted will be operative. It's getting just off the charts. Everywhere you look around the globe, there's some sort of um, wild weather going on. If it's not giant hail, it's strong winds, straight line winds, dust storms, tornadoes, floods, landslides, mudslides. It just goes on and on and on. And it doesn't stop. It only seems to intensify. So there's already a state of emergency in, a pl in, uh, in place in Doherty County, which is south of Albany, Georgia, right here for tomorrow. And the storms haven't even hit yet, but they're brewing. And they know it. And based off of what it did yesterday, they're not taking any chances. Another sign that this is in play. Record snow, blizzards. Newfoundland, eastern Canada, getting over 120 centimeters of snow. And for those of you in the U.S., 2.5 centimeters equals one inch. A couple images for you here. Snow up to the rooftops of homes. Now in Canada, when it's reported in the news as an unbelievable amount of snow, and this is in Gander, which also had record snows, 
two years ago. Seems to be a trend in that area. Here's the actual depth of some of the snow on top of the cars. And all of you hearing about the melting sea ice, oh, it's going to melt in and we'll use all the Northwest Passage, and it's definitely disappearing, the sea ice, or so you've been told. Atlantic Ferry, stuck in sea ice off Cape Breton. This off the IceAgeNow.info news feed. Nova Scotia Ferry, stuck. They're not really sure when they can get it out. They're sending an icebreaker right now to try to escort it out of this slush pack ice Image here for you of the escort ship trying to break it free right now and cut a channel through there. Cape Breton here on the map for you, Far Eastern Maritimes. A bit north of Halifax, Nova Scotia. Satellite image for you here. If truly all the sea ice was melting, you think further south latitudes would be the first place that it would disappear. Not in the Arctic Circle, which they keep claiming. How can there be so much sea ice this far south if all the ice is disappearing in the north? How can there still be ice further south? This is just simple, commonsensical stuff. guys got three tornadoes today and some beautiful lightning and destroyed another window with hail but more important news we lost three storm chasers today uh, Kelly Williamson Randy the storm wranglers were in an accident with uh, another storm chaser named Corbin from Arizona I believe I didn't know him but Kelly and I were friends and uh, used to hang out and underneath the storms and talk about everything except the storms. I remember being in New Mexico with him last year and we were looking for arrowheads and didn't find any, but uh, we talked about getting barbecue and beer all the times, but we kept missing each other. Um, just last two days ago in Oklahoma, he and I got to hang out for a good 20, 30 minutes before getting all the funnel clouds. And uh, he, was, uh, he was a hard worker and he was a good storm chaser. He was just a good old boy, down to earth guy, and that's what made the Storm Wranglers TV show so good. And uh, and uh, I'll miss him. And my deepest condolences go out to the families of all of them. Uh, it's uh, yeah. So I don't know what else to say, but rest in peace, guys. <laughs> 